This video is made possible by PureVPN. So in this video I want to tell you guys about OpenSUSE and why after all of these years I've decided to return to OpenSUSE as my primary desktop workstation. So before everybody throws tomatoes at me and calls me a distro hopper, I will admit that I do have a tendency of tiring of my distro and trying other distros in hopes that maybe something is better over there. But I've always thought that I've had a primary distro, like I'm only tasting or sampling other distros and I'll always return to my primary distro, and for a while I thought that that primary distro was Manjaro. But after returning to OpenSUSE with OpenSUSE Leap 15, I've realized that that primary distro is OpenSUSE. And in my opinion, OpenSUSE is probably the most underrated distro out there, and I'm excited to dig into the reasons why I'm using it and why you should too. So reason number one on this list, and this might be highly subjective, is that OpenSUSE is backed by an actual company, specifically an enterprise-ready, enterprise-size company, SUSE. Now a lot of distros out there are community-run, and that's great. However, I feel that a distro that is backed by an actual company, and specifically a company that is dedicated to open source, has a lot of advantages over just a community-run distribution. What's more, OpenSUSE is actually based on SUSE Enterprise, or it might actually be the other way around. SUSE Enterprise is based on OpenSUSE now with Leap, but because of this, OpenSUSE, the distribution, has support from the actual company, SUSE. SUSE developers contribute and work directly for the project. And despite all of this, the project remains community run. This is very similar to another distribution you may be familiar with called Fedora. The relationship between Red Hat and Fedora is a little bit different than OpenSUSE. At the end of the day, Red Hat has the ultimate say about what happens with Fedora, and Fedora has a pretty strict guideline that is mostly dictated by the whims of Red Hat, whereas OpenSUSE is largely community-driven and supported by the SUSE company. You could also compare OpenSUSE Leap to CentOS, but again, CentOS is much more aligned with Red Hat and their commercial products, whereas OpenSUSE is a community distro that is supported by an enterprise company. Number two on our list is the OpenSUSE release cycle. Now, the release cycle comes in two different flavors, whether you're using OpenSUSE Tumbleweed or OpenSUSE Leap. OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is a rolling release, very similar to Arch. Tumbleweed receives package updates as soon as they're integrated and tested by the OpenSUSE community. And depending on the velocity of the community and how many people are actually working and testing on the packages, they're ready when they're ready, which is generally pretty fast. OpenSUSE Leap follows a much more traditional release cycle. Each year there's a minor update called a service pack, which is aligned with the SUSE Linux Enterprise service packs. Major releases, which would bump OpenSUSE Leap from 15 to 16 to 17 and so on, happen between 36 to 48 months. Those are also aligned with SUSE Linux Enterprise releases. It's also worth pointing out that this release cycle is very similar to Ubuntu's release cycle, but it's very dissimilar to Fedora and CentOS's. Fedora has a much more aggressive release cycle with potentially breaking changes every release. CentOS has tiny releases every year and change, and major releases basically when they happen. CentOS 7 has been out since 2013, so... Now let's talk about the tooling. Now it's impossible to use OpenSUSE without using YAST. Now for whatever reason, it seems like Yast is somewhat polarized in the community, especially among power users. I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to remember every single command to be used in the terminal to find out information about my system. That's where Yast comes in. Yast is a system administration power user tool that allows you to do pretty much anything with your system without having to go to the terminal and type in all these obscure commands. Back in the day, Yast provided a whole bunch of functionality that nowadays desktop environments provide out of the box. For example, network control, system D log viewers, bootloader settings, date and time stuff, fonts. It even has a partitioner. Yast can do almost anything. And it even has an in-curses interface, so if you're using a headless OpenSUSE server and you don't want to have to remember all those commands, you can just fire up Yast from a terminal. Seriously, I don't know what there is to hate about Yast. I think it's the best tool on Linux, period. But there's more to OpenSUSE than just Yast. There's also the Open Build Service. Now the Open Build Service is not specific or exclusive to OpenSUSE. In fact, it's used by a lot of Arch AUR packages and things. It's kind of like Ubuntu's PPAs, but more legitimate, for lack of a better term. 
And because OBS is so accessible, lots of packages that aren't available in the standard repos or Pac-Man are available through OBS. And that's a good segue into the repos themselves. Now OpenSUSE kind of has a reputation, at least from my experience, of being a under-supported distro. A lot of packagers out there and vendors look at OpenSUSE and see that it uses RPM packages and assume that it's automatically compatible with CentOS and Fedora. So unfortunately, a lot of packages out there come broken right out of the box. That being said, the software in the standard repositories is quite expansive. There's a ton of stuff in here. The vast majority of what I need can be found in the standard repos. And the community keeps packages pretty up to date here. That's in stark contrast with packages you might find in Debian repos, which are often years out of date. Now there are a lot of restricted and patent encumbered packages that can't be included in the default repos, and that's where Pac-Man comes in. Now Pac-Man is a third party repo, but it's been around forever and it has a lot of really good stuff in there. And from what I understand, there are SUSE developers that actually contribute to Pac-Man, so it's not just some random third party repo that nobody really knows a whole lot about. In fact, you can actually add the Pac-Man repo from Yast. Unlike other third-party repos for like Fedora, you don't have to go online to the website and then add it through DNF. You can do it straight from Yast on a fresh install. I think that's pretty cool. Next up is the OpenSUSE community and the support provided by the community and by SUSE, the company. OpenSUSE has had an official wiki for as long as I can remember, and while it isn't quite as comprehensive as the Arch wiki, it is pretty darn good in its own right. It went through a huge overhaul in the past year or so, and I find in general it's pretty darn easy to find what you're looking for on here. There's a support page on the wiki that provides links to all sorts of different avenues for support, whether it's documentation or forums or Bugzilla. You can even search the hardware database from here, which is pretty cool. When I have a question or need help with something on OpenSUSE, I actually go to Reddit. The OpenSUSE subreddit is really, really cool, and there's a lot of maintainers on there that are quick to answer pretty much any question I've ever had. Now something that's unique to OpenSUSE, the Linux distribution, is the fact that you can buy a boxed version of OpenSUSE. Now I think that you can only buy it in Europe, though you might be able to find it on eBay in Europe, and the manual is a 400 page manual in German. But to the best of my knowledge, I believe it's the only Linux distribution, like open source Linux distribution, that you can buy a boxed copy for. Now the last reason on my list is simply nostalgia. OpenSUSE was the second Linux distribution I ever used. The first one was Fedora, I think it was called Fedora Core at the time, and I didn't stick with it for very long. And I thought it was pretty fun to explore Linux and the whole community using OpenSUSE with that old KDE 3.5 desktop. So if you look at my channel, the early, early videos, they were all done on OpenSUSE. In fact, I referenced the fact that I'm using OpenSUSE in a lot of the videos. That was back when OpenSUSE Factory was a thing, and I, I think it's still a thing now, but it was different at the time. And this might sound silly, but OpenSUSE has really, really great branding. It's got a really great mascot, and I really like the green tone color scheme. The whole thing just feels very professional and well-built, and I know that there's a lot of fly-by-night distributions that people really like and they love using, but me personally, I like the stability and the security that OpenSUSE provides from the polish, but also from the backing of an enterprise company like SUSE. So that about wraps up my short list of why I use OpenSUSE. Now, as much as I love OpenSUSE, I would absolutely not recommend it to new users for two reasons. The first reason is the way that networking is done. Networking on OpenSUSE is weird because it uses a service that's built into Yast called Wicked. The vast majority of distributions use Network Manager, which causes an applet to show up in your taskbar or wherever GNOME puts it, and you can control your network from there. That's not the case on OpenSUSE. You actually have to go into Yast, which requires root privileges, and configure your network adapter by hand. Now, if you have Ethernet, it's not a big deal, but if you have a Wi-Fi adapter, like a USB adapter, it's a serious pain. The other reason is that if you want to install applications, especially applications from external places like Flathub or just RPMs you download, you're pretty much stuck having to use Yast or Zipper. App stores like GNOME Software and KDE Discover are really hit or miss. And I know I've said I love Yast, but it's a really, really great tool for power users and people who are more experienced with Linux. New Linux users would find themselves overwhelmed if they opened Yast, let alone tried to find some applications in there. 
But if you've been around the block or two with OpenSUSE or you've heard about it and you've never used it, I strongly recommend checking it out. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to check the description for info on how you can support the channel. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.